Okay, welcome back to working with Ink in Godot. And we're going to be picking up kind of right where we left off at the end of the short video previously to look at how we can implement saving and loading into our project file. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things first before really jumping directly into the code. Um, and some of that stuff is going to be pretty straightforward for folks that are familiar with Godot, but I'm going to still walk through them a little bit just in case um, they're still getting used to working in this engine. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to actually look at some of the Ink GD resources and the Ink player script that we have in the plugin to look at some of the things that we want to incorporate into our project and how we want to do that. So the first thing that you'll notice is that I have these two buttons in the hierarchy here on my scene. These two buttons, um, I'm going to make sure that these two buttons are going to correspond to the Ink player or excuse me ink handler script that we've made in some of the previous lessons um, I haven't touched the script since last we left off so um, we're gonna be adding a couple of new functions down here that are gonna be based on these button presses so the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to save the save button in the hierarchy and I'm gonna go to the signals which is over here in the inspector in the node tab here and I'm gonna hit pressed and I'm going to connect that to this script and I'll just leave it as the default on save pressed that's good enough for me and then I'll do the same thing for load I'll go to load I'll click the pressed signal and I'll connect that as well so as you can imagine both of these buttons are going to serve as the uh, kind of instigators or initiators I should say of uh, saving and loading our ink project and really specifically saving and loading the ink state that we are currently in. So um, I'll just modify this list a little bit to get rid of some white space. But like I said, I want to go ahead and look over at the ink player really quickly. And again, this ink player script is um, a script that is part of the inkgd uh, plugin. And I'm going to try to, I've already kind of loaded it up here, but if you want to scroll down to where you start to see a comment for the state management methods that are included. Now, when we look at these methods, we're going to see some that are going to be really, really important and interesting and significant for what we're going to do. Um, but we're going to look at a couple, you know, besides the ones that we're going to be using. So one of them is going to be this get state. And this get state is basically taking the current state of your story, right, and it's converting it to a JSON file. Um, I'm not going to get into the really really deeply technical aspects of how it does that um, but I think it is important to know that this get state is is going to be really important because we're going to be calling this function in the other function or in the other method I guess um, that we will be using so I'm going to scroll down a little bit uh, and see the other kind of opposite side of this which is the set state um, again very very similar but instead of uh, getting the current state it is loading the state of our current string and it's loading that into a JSON so one of the methods that we're going to be using is this save state to path and what this save state to path does is that it allows us to pass a string within you know our resource project file and it writes a save file ostensibly um, I'm not going to get into how Godot accesses um, file access works uh, there's plenty of good resources out there for figuring out how uh, saving and loading uh, typical types of game projects and player preference files works um, within Godot. Uh, but it uses the file access uh, functionality to uh, basically open a new file to write some information to that file and then we want to close that. Importantly, nested kind of within this method is then saving that state that we're passing within the file to basically our user disk, right? So it's then going that and it's saying, okay, uh, save state to file. It's loading that and it says, if this is open, then get the state and store that string. So this string is ostensibly uh, a very long JSON string um, that you can kind of read and kind of parse. And we're gonna look at uh, a little bit of how we can do that together. The other method that is really important within Ink Player is this load state from path uh, again, kind of the opposite or the count, the counter to uh, the save state it looks very, very similar, um, but instead of uh, writing to the file, it uh, reads from it. And then it uh, loads the state from that file by using this other function. 
which says uh, uh, if this is, you know, if basically the file is more than uh, zero, more than any kind of length, then, you know, load the file information, which is a very long string that we're going to be writing into the file as text and then passing that as basically a JSON file, which then will load the state that we want to be in within our story. So again, I'm not going to go into too depth about how the file access process works within Godot, um, but I do think it is helpful looking at the existing functions within here uh, so that you know that I'm not just kind of pulling methods out of thin air, but that I'm actually pulling them based upon the inkplayer.gd that we have within the plugin. Great, so let's go back over to our script that we've made and implement those methods. So on save pressed, all I'm going to do is that I'm going to take that ink player variable that we set at the very top here. I'm going to say save state to path. And then I'm going to load a resource path in here. And the resource path that I want to put here, it can be basically stored within your project file. Um, that's going to work just fine. Um, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to basically put it in this saves folder that I've made within my project. So you probably want to make a saves folder in your own project if you already haven't, um, but I'm going to save it to this location. So I'm going to say res uh, saves, and then I'm going to basically write a new file, and I'm going to call this save.save file. Again, this looks incredibly redundant, but what this is doing is that it's taking the JSON information that we have. Again, we know that by looking at the method that's here, and it's going to put that in as a string into this file. So uh, that's all we have to do for right now uh, within this on save pressed is that we're just going to call that method and save that save file. Uh, just for our own verification, I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to print the ink player get state because I'm going to see what it's actually printing here. So let's go ahead and save this really quickly. Press play. And I'm going to click on my save button. And I'm going to come back here and you can see this is the string ostensibly again. This is a large JSON string that is basically all of the raw data currently of our project. And if I go back to here and I kind of navigate through my project a little bit, and I click save again, you'll see that it continues to write that. And the key thing to kind of take note here, at least easily to take note here, is that you can see that the thread index number, the integer here, has changed, right? So at the beginning of the story, the thread index is zero. And as I've kind of navigated through the story a little bit, that index has increased. Cool. You'll see some other variables that might get flagged and have been triggered along the way. You'll also notice the current text uh, that you might see uh, within the story itself. Uh, all of these things are really important information, but I just wanted to show that this is in fact the thing that is being printed right into our save file that we've just made. Okay, great. So let's stop that. In our onload pressed, we're basically going to use that other method that we've just said. So I'm going to say when this onload is pressed, I'm going to say ink player load. Let's say call load state from path, right? And I'm going to pass this information here. And obviously, I'm kind of hard coding this to this string value. You can obviously make this a variable, and you could export that variable. So have a lot more flexibility with what you want that to be. Oops, inks player, sorry. Um, but uh, for right now, that's going to be totally fine. Um, we're just kind of showing the, the process by which you can do this. And off, you know, obviously, you can kind of change this to however you want to. Um, but even though we've loaded that state um, and we've set that state to the player, what we need to do is then we kind of need to like restart the story. Um, and we're not going to start it from necessarily the beginning, um, but what we're going to do is that we're going to call one of the previous functions that we've had in this file here, this continue story function to basically kind of re-implement uh, the process of seeing, um, taking the state that we're in and then printing that in the rest of our 
interface. So I'm going to just go ahead and call continue story as I press that button. Now what we're going to see is that we're going to see a couple things that are going to be looking pretty odd and um, not super helpful initially, but we're going to find some ways to work around those issues uh, really easily. Uh, and we're going to code around those things to make sure that we have something that looks much more clean and much more consistent. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and save and see what this does. So uh, I can go ahead, I'm going to say, I'm going to click save here at the beginning and I'm going to go forward you know, just to get away from that. And then I'm going to click load. And what you'll see is that you're going to see a couple things. The first thing that you're going to see is that it loaded the choices, right, from the beginning of my story. Um, but it didn't change the initial story text. Um, this is an issue that I experienced when I was debugging this. And then also it didn't get rid of the previous buttons that were already loaded here. So if I click on these, it actually returns the wrong index of that choice to continue on. And that's gonna be a huge issue for us that we're wanna, gonna wanna avoid, obviously. We want this to be clean and seamless when we're saving and loading. So what we wanna do is that we want to both clear the current indexes of the buttons that we have loaded down here in our dialog, and we want to make sure that we're storing the information of what the current text is and to reload that information when we click load, right? Again, it doesn't work when we currently do that, but that's what we wanna do. So let's go ahead and hit stop. Okay, and we're gonna stop there for now and pick up in the next video by doing exactly that. See you in a second, bye.